Reine meiner Fassbinder. Desire. Why are you, Reine meiner Fassbinder? I seen you an asshole, a swine, not only against Ingrid Cowan. Would smack you in the puss preferably, when you're lying on the ground kick in the belly, shellac you so long until you are just a piece of bleeding shit. And then I would hug you and kiss you and beg therefore to be allowed to come into picture in one of your films. 1982, I was 17 years old. The movies of Rainer Werner Fassbinder always said something confusing, attractive, repulsive, brutal, fleshly, sweetish. I don't know what words I still should find. Confusing is best. Or Hitlerchka. His work seems to me like your films. Reveal. Never completely. Females. Females. Always females. I might almost say as this Bergmann, but that would be absurd. Germany, again and again Germany, post-war era, not only. Migrant workers, Negroes, movies that are not adequate in the Republic. And again and again females. None I found really beautiful, except Eva Mattes. Actually, it was her voice. Wildwechsel, Game Pass, was disturbing. She had such a beautiful face that becomes more and more beautiful. All were young at that time, I also. Ja did something, movies, many movies. I just looked, just thought. Females, did he love or hate them now? I'm not sure. Or was it only such a dare sorry, all women are horse except my mother and sister? Except meets, of course. His chat about his relationship with Bieberkopf, Mietz and Reinhold, I perceived even then only as ridiculous and stupid, especially that towards Mietz. Men. Kerel. I've never thought about men. They are just so ridiculously boring. And yet this movie disturbed me. And yet I want the light. Kerel. What he did when he laughed, especially the way he laughed. Do I have to think about it? Not really. Because also Querel is a name that's firmly anchored in my memory. But so far more. Veronica, Petra, to stay with Fassbinder. And yet it's interesting that just with him, not even with Pasolini. Berlin Alexanderplatz. I've written about the movie, the movie version of Filiuzzi and the book of Alfred de Blin, my test for the intermediate examination in modern German literature. The focus was on Fassbinder. I've considered every theme, every detail. For hours, for days, for weeks I've watched the film, became a part of it. I respond to his attitude towards the actors and actresses, Günter Lambrecht. The statements of Fassbinder, everything, everything I wanted to know. At the end, I had filled page after page. Perhaps the most beautiful, at least the most satisfying, what I've made in my life so far. Afterwards, I hated Fassbinder. He made me sick. The film I was addicted to. Orson Welles, Monument. Who are you, Orson Welles? You, the monument. You, who created something new. You, who together with Dennis Hopper, for me, was the greatest hero of Hollywood. You, who intimidated me always at pictures. You, one of those that I would have been so much. 1974, I was nine years old. The movies of Orson Welles always had something analytical in itself. Settings, pans, cutting, camera positions. Is it bad what I thought about Citizen Kane? Of course Citizen Kane, but most of all, touch of evil. Citizen Kane is good structured, captivated me immediately, but Rosebud? Lost childhood? Well, no. What was there to puzzle? 
even Hearst's mistress and then anything yet better. The narrative style brilliant. Touch of evil, however. Technically a masterstroke and a me capturing story with interesting characters. To me it was by far the more interesting movie. Even the magnificent Ambersons I saw and see at eye level with Citizen Kane. What Wells represents for me was something else. Failure. Not to fail because of yourself, but to fail because of the circumstances, the structures, the rules, the industry. He and Dennis Hopper were in disrespect my heroes. What could both have created for works? They would have led them, not to want to squeeze them in a frame. Out of the blue, I love the movie till this day. Should they have arranged themselves? should function, should be part of the whole, as requested to work on documents, solve problems instead of raise those. I probably would have functioned, would have been afraid of never be allowed to make a movie again. Would I have had the courage to go to Europe as they did? Hardly. Therefore, they were my heroes. They had dared it. Orson Welles is one of the few people I gladly would have shaken hands once, like a frightened schoolboy to a strict grandfather. My two I never knew. But I also know of no one who ever created something. How nice it would have been to shake the hands of Orson Welles once. I was 20 years old when he died. Peter Greenaway lost. Who are you, Peter Greenaway? Your films were masterpieces for me, something very special until a sudden break. These at the beginning, with that you made it art, philosophy, arithmetic with your films. Each film was a world by itself, it to discover was necessary, and then mainstream, and then pension. Does inaccessibility make sense? 1988, I was 23 years old. The movies of Peter Greenaway always had something ludic by itself. They challenged to search, to discover, but also to find, to recognize. They had something childlike, playful, enigmatic and exciting, as the world considered through the eyes of a child. The Droughtman's contract was a revelation. The images, the music, the riddle, the women. A film full of charming ease as the lace at the ropes of the men and the women, beneath and there over, subtle. You have to discover it, to look there, to listen to. Take your time. What a film like Blue Velvet tries with a lot of ribbery and pseudo shop images unfolds in creeping relentlessness here, as if sky sings. A set and two knots was the next stroke of genius of Greenaway for me. Of course, again the music, as in each of the still following movies. To watch the decay of the cadavers, what impressions, what moments of sorrow and suffering due to the dead animals, which now became stinging meat masses. Were they killed for this movie? And the final, when the human bodies are set to run away, did the actors really kill themselves? The snails. I always understood the movie as that it's a rejection of the question towards the uh, meaning of life. I loved it and I love it and mourn for the dead animals, not for the people who haven't done it really in the end. The belly of an architect. The images of the film the music, architecture. This film is a frenzy, sturdy crack light. In him I detected myself, especially at the end. He I wanted to be, him I saw alike, increasingly, externally. I was never in Rome, 
Should I think less about the end of the ocean and LA, more about windows in Rome? Nah. Dobo was never an alternative. Drowning by numbers. I still have to say something about this film. I've already had it. Only? I love it when the pretty young girl in her beautiful white dress while skipping rope enumerates the name of the stars. Now we are already three who know the names of the stars. And of course, I love it when the women do their work. Sometimes it would just be nice to be a woman. There is an abrupt end came. Not that I not know almost all of the later films, even the Tal's Lover Suitcases, at least the movies, but the magic was gone. And regarding Tal's Lover, to me is the question of who still, even more temporarily, should be able to follow that. Art for a few, but seems to me pointless. At least, in principle, art should be understandable and vivid for everyone. Otherwise, I can see no longer art therein. From Pynchon I have in mind that he said, why should literature be easy? Good question. Maybe because art should be something for people, not just for an elite circle that has the time and opportunity. I laugh about me now? I think quite seriously. No. Thank you for listening.